Hello, and welcome to Bringing Education Home. I'm Herb. And I'm Christina. And together, we bring you experts and ideas to help grow healthy, happy, successful families that are both inside and outside the box. If you like the show, be sure to follow Christina on Facebook. And please leave us a like review on your favorite podcast platform. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing Timothy Stutz. Only today's episode is a little different because Timothy is going to be interviewing us today. Timothy was on our podcast, on our 64th podcast. He is an author of children's fairy tales, and he is a good friend of ours. And so today, we're going to have him be the host. So Timothy, take it away. Uh, What a treat to be with you today and to be the host when I was the guest and... Welcome everyone to Bringing Education Home with Vibrant Family Education and Herb and Christina Hay Everett, who have crafted something that is just absolutely marvelous for me and what I see them doing. So let's learn a little bit more about Bringing Education Home and why why you started this podcast. Thanks, Timothy. Absolutely. So the one of the biggest things that brought bringing education home about was that when we started our company, Vibrant Family Education, we knew that that was going to be focused on the education for the family and the children. And I knew that I didn't have all of the answers. So I wanted to make sure our families had a resource to also get the information that they needed around their family dynamics, because we really support families in all aspects. But we know that sometimes we need some help. And I've been doing this daily broadcast on Facebook, just kind of documenting my life and using it as kind of a journaling process to help me with my recovery from a traumatic brain injury. And so I was used to kind of going online and Christina had been talking about, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. But she didn't have like the 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 bravery. And so I'm like, oh, hey, come on, let's just go do it. So I've invited some people that I knew that I had been working with. And we sat down and said, go. And she was actually really good at it. And within like one or two episodes, she goes, this is amazing. This is fun. And so it it is now kind of a passion project of its own, of its own because yeah. besides the fact that we are giving lots of great information to our families and to our parents, she's just having a lot of fun doing it. And she really enjoys it, talking with people, bringing the guests on, all of the stuff that goes around it. So so not only is it is yeah. it helping other people, it's it's keeping her motivated and excited. The excitement comes across and the two of you flow together absolutely wonderfully. It's quite inspiring to watch. And I mean, I've been watching some of your morning daily <laughs> briefings and I get inspired by them. And there's things that you share that resonate with me and there's things that you share on this podcast that really resonate with me. And I'm so glad that you're offering this to everybody. Yeah, um, and actually, I want to jump in here real quick because I actually was working with a parent right now. And she went back actually to the beginning of all of our podcasts. So we are now up to like episode 95, I believe, really close to that 100 mark. And she went back and listened to episode two. And she said, Christina, even though that was done almost two years ago, It's still very relevant and it was so helpful because the topic I was listening to was explained in a way that I hadn't heard it explained before. So just having that feedback in this this week about how even older episodes are relevant. Now, granted, the video isn't great if you're watching over on YouTube, but the audio is still crisp and clear. And the fact that those messages are being evergreen, they're there for families in the past as well as in the future. That's been really heartwarming for me saying, yes, bringing education home has started doing its job. You, you, you just, um, I, I just got a picture because when I go to podcast list, I, I look down the podcast, I look for something interesting, um, but it's they're all over the place. And when you said that, I was just thinking it'd be wonderful every 30 episodes or something if you did an episode that said, hey, this is what's in the 30 previous episodes. So if you're looking for this or categorize them by certain things and, you know, put put it in a PDF or something where people can go, oh boy, I go to these five episodes and I get this. 
<laughs> that is a wonderful idea. And we may have to do that. <laughs> yeah, I because like that I idea. We cover so much. <laughs> yeah, we, we have covered, we've covered digestion. We've, we've covered brain science. Brain science. Uh, um, authors like you and other authors, communication experts. We've had education experts, mm -hmm. um, reading experts, um, speech development yep. experts. We've had people who talked about, um, mm -hmm. wow, dyslexia. Uh -huh. And I can't remember the one about number lexia. Oh, dyscalculia. <laughs> Dys Dys dyscalculia. <laughs> And oh, wow. you know, we've even had people that came on to talk specifically about how important pooping is and gardening mm -hmm. and playing. So it's yeah. it really is all over the place. And so, yeah, having some sort of a list to, to be able to pick out those episodes would, would probably be a pretty cool thing to have. What a, what a comprehensive program. <laughs> want to hit all aspects of family life because we know how it works together. I mean, you know, we get talk about vibrant family education and that's the big thing we want education for the whole family now granted we're talking about academics and things for our children but it has to all go together if you're fighting because you're not communicating well if you're not feeling well because your digestion is off if you aren't laughing enough then you know the whole family is off and that learning that education doesn't happen so that's why we branched out and said you know what let's make sure our families have all the different pieces that they need yeah, and one of the reasons we've had so many nutrition specialists on is because like the school diet is just horrible now they have they have like 10 times the sugar that that a pregnant woman needs daily and then they like hype them up on sugar and then expect them to sit still and that's that's just like horrible for little kids to be on that kind of a diet and then force them into these rigid structures where they can't exercise you know there's a reason that that our country is now on the obesity index number one. We have the we have the heaviest country in the world right now, and so that that is it's so easy because you know you just you 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 burn more calories than you intake, but you know it's it's not it's not easy. It's simple. It's not easy yeah, to yeah. do, mm -hmm. um, especially yeah. with, with the way the the diet is in school. So mm -hmm. you know if you if you want, you either have to send your kids with food. But then once they're out of the, your site, they trade their foods. So that's one of the reasons we talk about bringing kids home is just so that you can help control their health and control their diet and get them to yeah. learn how to eat healthy. Yeah, I, 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 re, I, I went to military school for the first from kindergarten through sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And we had like a mess hall. Mm -hmm. So it was really like a military, but we all marched in. And there was tablecloths and really good, you know, plates and silverware. Yeah. And the food was home cooked. I mean, it was really cooked there. Yeah. And when I got to junior high school and public school, I was shocked. I mean, real, really shocked. So even back 50 years, 60 years ago, I, um, I was taking my lunches. There was only a few lunches that I would even eat in the public school system. And yeah, it's so important to feed the children good nourishment because you can't learn if your body's not functioning properly. Yeah. And, and to your other point, another reason we call it vibrant family education, like she said, it's for the parents, but we, we don't tell them that right up front usually. So it's like, Oh, this is about the kids. This is about the kids, but the parents learn so much and they start growing and they start eating healthier and they start learning how to play. And you know, less than half of Americans right now can, even the adults can read above a sixth grade level. So as they're teaching their children how to read and filling in the holes that the children learn, mm -hmm. then they're getting some of their fundamentals and their reading levels are going up. As they get away from this weird new math, they're, they're getting the concepts and the basics of math mm -hmm. and they're getting better at math. They're learning the communication, which you know, hell, I'm a Gen Xer. We 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 were the feral generation. We learned how to communicate on our own, but we didn't learn how to teach it. So, so now you know, parents are learning more how to communicate, learning how to um, to get their emotions, their emotional intelligence out there as well. Yeah. And so it really is uh, a backdoor into helping the parents by saying, "Oh yeah, we're going to help with your kids." 
but as as the parents are helping the kids it's really helping them as well and so that's kind of one of the the little hidden gems that that vibrant family education provides oh, wow. Mm-hmm. but we kind of hide it because we go, Oh no, you parents, you need a lot of work. They're not going to want. <laughs> <laughs> you, you come at it from the same point that I write children's stories. My daughter wanted me to read stories over and over and the ones she wanted, I didn't like. So when I write, I write to make the adults happy too, and to educate them with things that I know are missing from their life because they were missing from my life. Mm-hmm. So Building in the back door like that is a wonderful way to address the whole family. And you guys have such a broad background um, that you pull from, which is absolutely amazing. Would you like to share any of that? Because, yeah, it's a broad it's a broad background. You bring a lot of expertise and a lot of wisdom from your own lives into this. And that's a great question. It's something that we really want parents and stuff to think about because if from our background, we're coming from almost 33 years of being married. So a lot of communication right there, right? This making 33 years work well. <laughs> and then raising two boys of our own. And one of those boys was on the autism spectrum. So we've got the special education model and things that need to be done to help those special needs kids, as well as our other son, who was just our, you know, our average kiddo, right? And so we're coming from that kind of life experience as parents and partners together in helping our children learn and grow. And then on top of that, I'm coming with 27 years of education experience in the classroom and online schooling, right? And sometimes people say, oh, well, you're a teacher, so how could you even help with homeschooling? And what I wanna say about that is that I took my 27 years of education And I really looked at the homeschool situation and the people that really wanted to make a change in their child's education and bringing that experience and putting it into the homeschool field. And the reason why is because I know that parents are the first best teachers and I want them to know that they don't have to worry about not necessarily knowing all the academics. They can ask someone like me to help with the academic part. And then we can build and grow that homeschool that is really best for their child. So I'm bringing all of that experience, wife, mom, teacher, person who loves children and reading so much into this thing called Vibrant Family Education. And this guy. Um, I am uncomfortably smart. And growing up, I like made my teachers like afraid of me because I would like be sitting in the class reading a book and then they would ask the classic question and they would see me not paying attention they go herb you answer that question and and i would answer it and give more information um like in high school they would like give out reading lists or they would ask me like have you read this book have you read this book have you read this book trying to come up with a book i haven't read so that they could use that in class and and i was also very much into what people call the woo world so i see the world different i come at the world different um, one of the ways I explain it is, is I've always seen God and I didn't understand that that's necessarily yeah. what I was looking at, but I see life in a different way. So I learned Reiki. I learned healing touch. I learned a lot of different meditation practices. I, I was in that woo world for a really long time and sitting around those woo groups and going to some of those retreats, I was kind of the weird one out. I, I actually started, picked up a moniker of, of an interesting point of view. So on my name tag, it was like, Herb, interesting point of view. Because even in those groups of woo world, I saw things, I brought things up, I spoke differently than other people did. And, and then I also was an entrepreneur. I, I worked at Intel, Integrated Electronics you know, little microchip firm, you might've heard about them. Yeah. And, and I, so in corporate and whenever I did a job, I, I just was a really competent person and I did it well and I would make things better and I would improve processes. Cause that's just kind of the way I am. And so I I've done all of these different things. I have a different way of looking at the world. And then many years ago, I think it's about 10 or 15 now, I I had a series of traumatic brain injuries while snowboarding and I hurt my head Mm -hmm. and my business fell apart. I had started my own business. It was becoming quite successful. And then I kind of lost my emotional 
control. Regulation, I lost my, yeah. I damaged my prefrontal cortex. So I hurt my, my executive, executive decision-making, my executive functioning. Mm -hmm. And so things got really difficult for me. And it took me a lot of years to figure that out and to get to a point where I could start rebuilding my life. And just as I, just as I made that corner and realized that I did want to continue living and, and rebuild everything, that's when we were, I was at a business event um, unintentionally. And at the end of this event, I heard the voice of God and it was a speaking event. And it was like, get up on stage and, and tell them about your school. So after having not participated in this event the whole time, because at this point I was, I was still a pretty big mess. And like I said, I, I didn't intend to go to this business event. And so I didn't participate in a three-day event. But at the very last, as I get up and talk about this, and so I got up and I did my little speech and it was, and I just blew them away because every point that they had been talking about through the weekend, I, I nailed. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the way I am. It's like, I, I have this ability to- Brings things together bring and things makes together. them make sense. And so in my life, it's like, oh, I heard this over here. I heard this over here. I heard this over here. And I can bring it together in kind of a picture. Um, if you've ever watched, um, well, I, I can't remember the movie, but there's like this pill that the guy takes and suddenly he's like a lot smarter. He sees Limitless. things. Limitless. The, when he takes the first pill, he's like walking up to this lady and he sees the title of a book. He sees this, he sees that. And then he just puts together this whole picture of what's going on in her life. I kind of do that kind of naturally. And so when I first saw that movie, it's like, that's what I do. Um, and how and, does that bring out uh, to Byron Family Education? And, and so, bring... yeah, so I just have this way of, of, of being able to take information from so many different places and bring it all together and make it relevant in the moment and help parents that way. Exactly. I, I would, I would, I would, that is one of the highest forms of creativity. I, I, I'm going to call you Santa Claus because one of the first stories I wrote was the very first candy cane. Mm -hmm. And it's literally about Santa Claus, you know, walking through the toy shop with the elves yeah. and he sees a shepherd's staff, mm -hmm. but he just notices it, you know, and he's wondering why he notices the shepherd's staff. Yeah. And then he goes out and there's a beautiful sunset. And there's all these reds and stuff. And he's got a red suit. And there's white clouds. And all of a sudden, he gets the idea of making candy canes by swirling the clouds and the sunset together into a staff. And so it's a very high form of brilliance to be able to pick up different things from different times and bring them together. And you guys have brought, you, you take that and all of Christina's background, and you have brought it together and what a vibrant family education program. And I know you're in the process of um, bringing that out into the world in a new way. Yep. And would you, would you like to talk about that? I would actually, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we've been working in building for several years now. And one of the things that I really want people to know about right now is that our beginning course. So that is called the Nuts and Bolts of Homeschooling. And it's really a place where you get to come and work with me. And we really look at, is homeschooling going to be a really good fit for you? And now that you've decided, oh, it's a great fit for me, I want to make sure I have all my foundations laid down. And we go through the course and we make sure that not only are you prepared to be the empowered parent, to take a charge of your child's education, but you also have those basics. And then as you continue to work with Vibrant Family Education, you get the support and the coaching and the help of me and Herb's intuition, and, you know, everything all wrapped in there to really make this a good fit for you and your family and to really make your family grow and flourish. Yeah, so many people nowadays say, oh, our education system is broken. We completely agree. And so many people are like, oh, I really wanna get my kids out of school. But then when it comes down to it, when it's like time to push that button, it's like, okay, I want my kids out of school. They get afraid. They like, oh, I can't do it. Oh, mm -hmm. it's not going to work for me. And so they lose their confidence and they don't think that they're going to be good enough. And one of the things, what we really provide is that backup, that confidence that, no, you can do it. You, here's how you do it. And they're like, oh, this is harder than I thought. It's like, no, you're doing great. You don't have to push so hard. You know, so we had a, she's working with a lady now that was trying to get like three or four hours of, of work out of her kindergarten. She's like, no, 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 you need to back that down. 
that's like 45 minutes of of like sheet work of of working but then you need to play with your children and so she started like taking her out him outside and was like let's find things that are the color blue let's find and so they started playing and so mm -hmm. just the joy that she found in being able to talk with somebody who knew how much to do what to do mm -hmm. And instead of trying to figure it all out yourself and trying, instead of pushing and fighting with your kids to learning, just having somebody that's like that, that an expert like her actually in the education who, who knows the littles and, and when to do what, the, the lady is like, took a huge weight off of her shoulder. And now she's having so much more fun. She's enjoying it a lot. And she's doing amazing, amazing work with her, with her children. And so you don't have to do it alone. You, and as any entrepreneur, as any business person, as anybody who's who's trying to do stuff, Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods has like eight or nine coaches mm -hmm. and he's the best golfer in the world. Yeah. So if you want to do something like take your children out of school, get yourself some coaches, get yourself some help. And as a foundation, as a place to get started, I mean, she is absolutely amazing. Me, I'm a little more at the high level. You bring me in when there's like, what's going on? <laughs> um, but for the for the main education aspect, you, you work with a 27 year old teacher or a 20 no, a 27 <laughs> year veteran teacher. There we go. <laughs> and and then you know, at when it's time to be inspired and find something new, that's when I come along and it's like, oh, you're doing this. Oh, you're doing this. Oh, you're doing this. Oh, you know what? It sounds like if you wrap it up like this. And you can watch these like lights go off and they're like, wow, I am doing it right. This is amazing. Yeah. And so, you know, it sounds like we're, we do a lot, but really what we do is we give parents the confidence and accountability and accountability at times. At times <laughs> yeah. To, to be able to go into their family and make the difference that they want, not yeah. that we want, not that the schools want but they want their family running like this. Mm -hmm. We help them get that yeah. mm -hmm. and we help them start with that. So instead of waiting years until, you know, they build their business or they get out of school and then trying to fix all the damage, start with the end goal in mind, yeah. start where you want. And we help you do that and, and do it in a way that works for you. Now a few words about vibrant family education. How many entrepreneurs and business owners start out on this journey to make a better life for their family, only to find that it took so much more time and effort than they were expecting that they had even less time for their family? I know I did. At Vibrant Family Education, we want to help you reach your family goals while you're still building towards your business goals. We do this by bringing you the third leg of the stool to keep your family upright, family education development. By bringing your children's education home, you will be able to model your work ethic and family values as you overcome obstacles and challenges to build your business. Instead of learning facts to pass tests, your children can be watching and seeing the dedication it takes to build your business and the legacy you want to create for their future. They will be able to witness the struggles and joys, the wins and the losses, and learn from you how to persevere and grow in life. Instead of waiting until you get successful to spend more time with your family, start with the end goal in mind and bring your family home. Instead of trying to repair your family after you reach success, let us help you start achieving your family goals from the outset. Learn to be successful with your family now, and no matter what happens in the future, they will be better prepared for life, especially after watching how you cared for and built not only a business, but a healthy, healthy, happy, and successful family. We offer a wide range of educational services, including how to easily get started with homeschooling. Come visit us at vibrantfamilyeducation.com and let us show you how. And now back to our guest. And I know one of the ways that you help parents do that is you understand that everybody has a different way of learning. And so you can help every parent understand not only their way of learning, but how their child learns and how to mm -hmm. blend that together in the best program possible. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's one of the mainstays of that beginning program is we look at learning styles. We look at not only the child's learning style, but the parent's learning style. We really try to find that balance of how it's going to work to present the information to the child and for the child to receive the information so that you're not butting heads. Because that's one of the other things families say is like, oh my gosh, homeschooling is so hard because the kids are fighting and this is, and they're not interested in data. It's like, okay, well, let's look at a little bit lower and find out why they're butting heads, why they're you know, refusing learning, why they are doing whatever. I'm able to help 
brainstorm ideas and really help find maybe that root cause. And along with learning style, there's also the personality aspects of mm -hmm. it. So certain yeah. different personalities react differently to different situations. Mm -hmm. So not only do you find your children's personal or um, learning, style. learning style, you start figuring out their personality and how different personalities work together. And so th this is like the, the higher brainier stuff that I get mm -hmm. into. It's like, oh, you have a kid that, that likes these numbers and does math and has their brain is is introverted and they come at it this way. And then you have this person that's extroverted and they get their validation from outside. How do they communicate and talk and together. work together to be able to get what they need? Now, just because you're introverted doesn't mean you can't learn how to do extroverted okay. skills and mm -hmm. fit in the world that way. But if you know where you're starting, then you can know how to build those things in. So this person has an extroverted strength. They're really great with people right off the bat. Mm -hmm. But now you need to teach them how to be alone, how to meditate, how to, when they're not in a crowd, how to find their energy. This person is an introvert. They don't like to be in crowds. So they get their strength and, and their, their recharge from mm -hmm. being alone. But then you also need to start branching them into the crowds, into learning how to do that. So you take their personality and you build their character mm -hmm. using the yeah. tools that their personality needs. And that, for me, that foundation of life is more important than reading, writing, or arithmetic. <laughs> Absolutely. Because we need to be in the world with people and relate to people. And when we can understand what you just shared, Herb, it helps a lot. I, I mean, really, I was in my 40s before I understood that people think differently, mm -hmm. <laughs> that we don't all put two and two together in the same way. Right. And when we, if we have that as a child, Oh my God, we, we are so far ahead when we go out into the world and all of the other things just flow together so much easier. Yeah, and one of the things I really want parents to think about is that, you know, all of us have traumas, all of us have challenges, all of us have things that really might be holding us back as adults. What if we could reverse that a little bit? What if we could make it so our kids don't have quite so many? Now, you always need challenge to learn and grow. I'm not saying, you know, be a helicopter parent and fix everything. But at the same time, if you're able to reduce instances of bullying, if you're able to reduce instances of, oh, I'm not understood. Oh, you know, this is going on. Oh, I don't understand what's going on in my family. So those traumas don't build up in their heads so they don't have to deal with it later. What kind of wonderful kids and people are we going to have putting out into the world because they're more stable, more grounded, and they understand that, oh, things might not be going my way, but if I do this and this, it can turn around for me. So, you know, that's another thing is this whole family development, vibrant family education. The vibrant is let's make sure we're putting out kids, helping kids grow and be that vibrant person instead of someone who has sorrows and traumas and things that they're trying to fix later in life. And now sometimes it sounds like, oh, this is a whole lot. This is, you're talking about so much, but you start small. You start yeah. at the basics. This, this isn't something that we're going to throw at you all at once. Yeah. And this is why I said we use the children's education as, as the, the platform, as the launching yep. pad. So we start to get that. And then it's like, oh, this is what's going on while you're doing that. Okay, well, let's look at this now. Oh, hey, we've got that's working so much better now. Oh, here's this thing over here. And so we build and we put it together and we put this platform that helps the family grow. So we're not going to be throwing everything at you all at once. This, yeah. this is a growth process. This takes a while. And so, you know, it. But that's why we have our beginning basic program. And then we branch out to further coaching as needed. Hmm. I, just that. Um... I, I remember with my daughter, mm -hmm. if something was going on with her, I wouldn't try to force her to share what was going on with her, mm -hmm. but I would take her for a ride in the car. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden things just come out when they're in a comfortable situation. And like you said, when those things, when the child can verbalize those things and get whatever's bothering them out of their system, and not sweep everything under the rug yeah. <laughs> because everything that gets swept under the rug eventually comes out in other ways whenever when they're least expected mm -hmm. so 
just having the ability to be able to share within the family and to feel comfortable sharing, it smooths things out forever. Yeah, yeah exactly. we, we weren't very good at that. Yeah. We, we hit a lot of things when we were having financial problems. We like would hide that from our children. And so we didn't end up with that kind of a communication. And as a result, our youngest son doesn't talk to us anymore. And mm -hmm. so that that's a really, that's also kind of a core reason why we started this so that other people don't have to go through that kind of a pain mm -hmm. so that we can take our problems and our mess and maybe help people figure that out before it gets that bad. So you know, yeah, yeah, it's one of those things that helping families so the bad things don't happen to you, you know, can't fix it all, but can maybe give you some pointers along the way. Oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. But, you know, it's us. It's it's us coming from our place of heart, hoping families can live and grow and be vibrant. Yeah, because right now there are so many families out there who who are kind of like us, who's who's their their mm -hmm. children just leave, you know, they're. I think we're tomorrow we're going to be interviewing somebody for our podcast who works with, par with parents whose children don't talk to them anymore. And my my best friend, his his two of his daughters like walked away from him and stopped talking to him. It was just so happened to be right after they went to college and started learning <laughs> all of the weird stuff in college right now because the society is really against the nuclear family is really against kind of men in general. <clears throat> So his daughters went back to college and came back and told him that he wasn't a good dad and, and don't talk to him anymore. So this stuff does happen. And so if you get your family values, if you teach your family values, if you get your communication right, if, if you get the traditions within your family down yeah. and taught, and then, then your family will survive these kind of things. Not only that, when these things come up, your, your children will laugh. It's like, no, my dad's not like that. My mom's not like that. And you'll have a stronger family. Yeah. So we want families to go. It's, you know, you don't have your kids till they're 18 and then poof, they're gone, which seems to be happening right now. You want your families to be with you for the rest of your life. You know, your jobs come and go, your friends come and go, but your children should be your children for the rest of your life. And then when you have grandchildren, you want them. We have a granddaughter. We haven't got to see her in years. You, you want your family to stick together. And if you're letting the government raise your children, if you're letting the schools raise your children, if you're not teaching your family values, then somebody else is. And they're teaching their values, maybe not your values. So it's really important to, even if you do have to stay in public school, to work with a coach, to learn some of these things that we're talking Be about. Involved. So even if you're not going to homeschool, you can still work with us on the communication aspect, on the homework aspect with tutoring. I mean, we, we offer so much just mm -hmm. to keep the families together to avoid the hurt that we went through. And, and all that hurt serves as a basis of wisdom and understanding for what people go through. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and you were talking about woo-woo and seeing everything as God. I know from my own personal experience, my dad disowned me. My dad disowned me. It was reverse, okay? He'd be in the same room with me with other relatives and not even acknowledge I was alive. Wow. And that went on for eight years. Yeah. And then suddenly in a meditation, I saw he was going into the hospital. And I just, after eight years, I picked up the phone after my meditation. He answered and it was like, we were long lost best friends. All of that just melted. Yeah. So I know God, prayer, love can cut through all of that stuff. And my daughter's mother turned her against me and wouldn't let me see her. Mm -hmm. And it's taken a lot for her to break through that and to reach out to me. Um, so I know prayer and all of that really works. And you guys, you guys have such a breadth of experience to help families. It's amazing to me. Thank you so much, Timothy. And, you know, that's why we did this show today. We did this show today to make sure that people know what is Vibrant Family Education all about. 
what is bringing education home all about and the heart that we have for helping families. And I hope this comes through in this show, this episode. And I hope that people really realize that we're here for them and their families to make their children be happy, healthy, and successful. Right. And, and like I was saying earlier, it's, it's so tailored to each family, to each individual. You know, the, the education aspect of it, the reading, the writing, the arithmetic really doesn't take all that much time each day. But the family building, the stuff that you're learning that'll hold you together, that will last a lifetime. And, and you can put the education aspect off for a really long time. And, you know, because kids, once they get into a certain space within themselves, then they can catch up like that. And right now we have so many children that, like I said, the, the, our graduating seniors read it below a sixth grade level. But if you get them in a safe space, if you get them where they're wanting to learn, mm -hmm. they can get caught up in weeks and months and it doesn't take years. Um, so you can have a children that's, that's way far behind, even in third grade. And once they feel safe and comfortable and they get in that learning environment, they can get caught up like that. And then they can just exceed and just keep going. Yeah. So the education aspect of it, while it is important, it isn't the main focus. It really is keeping a the family, a holistic education. approach to education. Yeah. Life because, skills, emotional skills, family skills. Because there's so much more peopling Energy. that needs to be done. And once the peopling gets under control, then the education just just falls into place okay. yep. like like it's meant to be. And I imagine if you can really learn to tune into your child and discover what their talents are along the way and what they really love, and then take those things that they love and bring those into the education process and build it in together so they're actually learning what they need reading, writing, and arithmetic in relation to what they love. Yep, you use Absolutely. their strengths to build up their weaknesses. Yep. And instead of focusing on their weaknesses and, and trying to fix those, you focus on the strengths. Mm -hmm. And then you sneak in and build their weaknesses up. It's it's really it's Amazing. really funny yeah. how, how it works. So families, our message to you today is to please let us help bring education home. Come contact Vibrant Family Education. Our website is beautiful. Just launched about two months ago. We have our programs on there. We have contacts for the um, podcast. We have all the different things, all the events that we are going to be at. Exact, um, matter of fact, in October, we're having our state of education. This is October 2024, but we're hoping to continue those um, panel discussions and bringing more experts to you and giving you the family what you need to have a vibrant family. And that's for and that's for all all age children, correct? Correct. You, you service all age children. It's not yeah. just one specific age group. Yeah, I, I prefer the youngers, but of course, as I've been building my expert base, I have people who do the middle school and high school as well. So you know, come talk to me. If we're not a good fit, I'm gonna help you find the people who are a good fit for you. Yes, go find, go see Herb and Christina, go to Vibrant Family Education and look at all the programs they have. And you, do you still have a founder's discount going? No, not right now. That 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 has passed, but don't worry, something else is coming. All right. <laughs> oh, so, so lovely to be able to host you and just find out more about what you do and why you do it and all the benefits. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you for the service that you offer to the world and for everything that you've gone through to be able to offer this service. And thank you today for coming on and agreeing to host with us. It was a pleasure talking with you. I really like the direction of your of your questions and where we went today. So it, it was awesome today. Thank you, Timothy, for being here. Thank you for helping us. You're welcome. All right, families, this is it. We are ending for today, but please remember, reach out, ask questions, do what's best for you and your family. Find that perfect fit education so that your children can grow up happy, healthy, and successful. And until next time, bye for now. Bye for now. Hello, and welcome to Bringing Education Home. I'm Herb. And I'm Christina. And together we bring you experts